the words Sarajevo, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Croatia, Kosovo, Albania? What comes to your mind? What do you see? These words sound distant to you, somehow foreign, somehow alien. Perhaps they remind you of ethnic cleansing. Two nice sounding words, somehow safe, somehow clean, ethnic cleansing. Perhaps it reminds you of a tidy bathroom. Well, let me tell you, Sarajevo, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Croatia, Kosovo, Albania, these are not as distant from you as you may think. All of us, Serbs, Croats, Muslims, Jews, Hungarians, and you too. We are all human beings, and as human beings we have a great capacity to feel and to express. Sometimes we express beauty and kindness. Sometimes we express uncontrollable rage. This is the story of the former Yugoslavia. It is my story, but I think if you change the names, it is your story as well. My name is Vetran Smilevich. I am 51 years old. I look older than that, I know. You too would look older if you had lived in the capital of hell. All of us, Serbs, Croats, Muslims, Jews, Hungarians, Kosovars, Albanians, and you too. We all have excellent memories. Our memories are vivid and long-lived. We all remember the story that the other people, the other people, raped my great, 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 great grandmother. She was 12 years old when the other people raped her. They killed her mother, father, brothers, sisters. They beat her and they raped her and they beat her again and they raped her again and they threw her into the forest as a dead person. But she did not die. She survived and she remembered fully. She told her children what the other people had done to her. She sowed the seeds of hate in my people, just as your great, 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 great grandparents sowed the seeds of hate in you. But something happened to me, something happened for me, so that the seeds of hate were not sown so thickly inside of me. When I was a child, I heard a sound, a sound that touched my soul. It was not the sound of hate-filled words or breaking bones. It was the sound of a musical instrument, the sound of a cello. was the first warm day of spring after our endless bitter cold winter. My mama said to me, Vedran, my beautiful, precious boy, your little brother is ill today and the three of us cannot go to market together as we usually do. But today, Vedran, you are old enough, you are ready to go to market by yourself. Here is ten denare. Go to market, buy potatoes, Buy as many as you can, make sure there are no worm holes and no rot, and come back quickly to me. And Vedran, you know that in order to get to the market, you must go through the neighborhood of the others, 
It is a place filled with danger for you. You are not safe there. Come back quickly to me. I took the ten denarii into my hand, and I clenched my fingers tightly around the coins, and I thrust my fist deep inside of my pocket because I did not want the coins to jingle, because I was afraid that if they jingled, the other boys, the others, would hear them jingling and try to steal them from me. As I said, it was the first warm day of spring. People were opening their windows for the first time. I was in the neighborhood of the others, and I heard the sound coming out of the open window, the sound of a cello. I was in the neighborhood of the others. I knew that my mama had told me that I was not safe here, that it was a place of danger for me. But I could not go past the sound. I traveled deep inside of myself with the sound. I soared with the sound. The sun ceased to exist in the sky. The people and houses disappeared. There was only the sound of the cello coming out of the open window. When the music stopped, a man's face appeared in the window, a kind face. He saw me looking at him. He smiled. Did you like my music? He asked. I was embarrassed and could only nod my head. Yes. My name is Ismar, the man said to me. This man is one of the others, I thought to myself. But I like his face and his voice, and I love his music. My name is Vedran, I said softly. Bill, Vedran, Ismar said to me. I play my cello every day at this time. Tomorrow, if you wish, you may come inside of my home and sit in the comfort of a chair to listen to the cello. I understand it is going to rain tomorrow, and I do not want my new friend Vedran to get wet. I did go, the next day, and the next, and the next. Ismar became my teacher, playing the cello. Ah, playing the cello became how I communicated with the world. I studied hard. I became the principal cellist of the Sarajevo Symphony. symphony, Muslims, Serbs, Croats, Jews, Hungarians, we all played music together. And our audiences were filled with the same Muslims, Serbs, Croats, Jews, Hungarians, who were all fed by the same food, our beautiful music. Then the war, now the seeds of hate, so carefully tended for all these generations germinated in the fertile fields of fear, mistrust, contempt. Our daily lives were filled with murder, rape, concentration camps, torture. We cut down our beautiful trees to keep from freezing through our endless bitter cold winter. We feared, we starved, we hated. And yet, I continued to play my cello and the symphony we played on. And like everyone else, we in the symphony were shot and we died. 
Seven members of the symphony were murdered. Twelve were wounded. And the clarinetist, the soldiers took his instrument from him and they drove their tank over his instrument. It was like driving their tank over his own voice, like driving their tank over his own child. And yet, he continued to play. One day, a mortar shell hit Symphony Hall. In Symphony Hall, there was no light, no heat, Temperatures were below zero. Our fingers were cold, our lips were cold, the instruments were cold, the audience was cold. People from the audience held candles by the musicians just so we could see the music sheets. To get to Symphony Hall, we had taken our lives into our hands. To go out onto the streets was to become a target for the snipers. And after the concert, we would take our lives back into our hands, trying to get home alive. But there was no choice. This was our mission, to keep the music alive. If only we could stay alive to keep the music alive. May 27, 1992, 4 p.m. The smell of freshly baking bread fills the air. I look out of my apartment, 100 meters away. The bakery somehow has flour. The bakers are baking bread and giving it to starving people. A long line of starving people date in the street. I see my brother amongst them. And then at 4 p.m., 4 p.m. precisely, a shell falls out of the sky and explodes directly in the middle of the starving people. Their bodies and blood splatter the street. Many are wounded, 22 die. What am I to do? I must do something. How can I create something of kindness, something of peace, something of beauty? Every day after these 22 people are blown to bits in front of my eyes, at 4 p.m. precisely, I put on my formal concert clothes. I put on my white tie and my tails. I take a stool in one hand and my cello in the other, and I go out onto the abandoned streets, and I play a concert in the bomb crater where the 22 died. I thought the world had abandoned me, had forgotten my country, 
Bullets whiz by me, shells explode around me, but I am never touched. One day, a woman comes up to me. She says, my name is Joan Baez. I have heard of what you are doing, and I have come to sing Amazing Grace with you. And Joan Baez sang Amazing Grace, and I played Amazing Grace on my cello in the bomb crater where the 22 died. Another day, I pause in the middle of my concert. Time for a little intermission, Vedran, I think to myself. And so I place my cello against the stool, and I take many steps away. And then, out of the sky falls a shell and explodes directly on my cello. My cello. The extension of my fingers, the extension of my lips, the extension of my soul. It is blown into a million splinters. Yes, we are all human beings, and as human beings we have a great capacity to feel and to express. Sometimes we express beauty and kindness. Sometimes we express uncontrollable rage. With the destruction of my cello, my world is filled only with uncontrollable rage. But then something happens in the United States of America. A woman hears a radio program about the Sarajevo Symphony. She hears of the murder of the musicians. She hears of the wounding of the musicians. She hears of the destruction of the instruments. And yet she hears that somehow the symphony still plays. This woman, her name is Marianne Liberator. She lives in Westport, Connecticut. She thinks to herself, I must help. Somehow she communicates with our director. Tell me what you need. I must help, she says. And our director says, our woodfins are destroyed. We need instruments to play. Please send us instruments. So Marianne says to her friends in Westport, Connecticut, we must help. We have heard these words before. We want to help, they say, and that is the end. But not so with this woman and her friends. Within four months, we receive into our hands and up to our lips two clarinets, an oboe, a piccolo, a bassoon, and English horn. These are professional instruments. Instruments of kindness, instruments of peace, instruments of beauty. Then these people from the United States come to us again and say, tell us what you need, we must help. These people from thousands of miles away, these people from places that are alien to us, these people who speak a foreign language, and yet these same people with whom we share a common language, a love for music, they come to us again and say, tell us what you need, we must help. And our director says, our stringed instruments are in terrible repair. They are sensitive beings. We need someone to come to us to repair them. So these people from the United States of America send Philip Njayan, a master violin maker. He comes to us and he works night and day for two weeks and he restores every bow and every stringed instrument of the symphony and we play on because we know we are all human beings and as human beings we have a great capacity to feel and to express Sometimes we express uncontrollable rage. Sometimes we express beauty and kindness. 
We hear some say, music and dart, just a frill. Music and dart, just a frill. I am here to say to you, I, Vidran Smilovich, the one who played his cello in the bomb crater while the bullets and shells exploded around me, I say to you, perhaps if there was more music, this war would never happen. Perhaps music and culture can finally change the minds and soften the hearts of people to somehow make wars stop. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 